hot chocolate comfy sweaters, photo DIY projects, they're all perfect for a day at home. That's why Auntie Ashley Orkin from Unglued is here to give us some great projects to do in a cold winter's day. Welcome back. Yes, thank you guys. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, right? This is good times, January and crafting. <laughs> Got to do things to keep you busy in the cold months. Right. And I really was thinking a lot about getting your photos off of the digital world and social media and your phone on it into your real life. And so these are all ideas to make that happen. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna start with the more traditional one, but I want to say I can vouch for these. I've had the coasters that are over here for five years and they just have a Polaroid look to them. And they've lasted on our coffee table and I just absolutely love them. And so you can choose to do things in black and white or in color. Um, but basically we're doing this really, really cheap. So you're buying a 16 cent four by four inch tile at the hardware store. So you got down to the penny. 16 right? Cents. 16. <laughs> you can buy these little bumper feet kind of thing. And so we're going to actually start with that. I'm going to quickly put these on there. Um, and you can put one on there too. How much were those or two. for four? These, uh, well, you buy them in like a 90 pack. <laughs> They're probably like two cents each. <laughs> so we're going to be doing this under a dollar in the end. Um, I like to put the feet on before we start because it prevents your project from getting glued onto the bottom on your right. table and that kind of thing, so you're elevating it. And then we have totally normal Mod Podge. Uh, it's a matte kind. And you can go ahead and just dip your foam brush in there and start to swipe over the whole thing. Doesn't matter we're how do much. A, kind of a thin coat to start. Oops. <laughs> Which, uh, you know. It can, this is all very, uh, lots of different ways you can do it. We're going to put on a nice thick coat right now. <laughs> and all I did was print a picture from this past year, wanting to get my photos into real life. Um, in This is with a laser uh, printer, but you can use an inkjet as well for this project. It's not a fussy project. And then we have one layer of Mod Podge on there. I'm trying to make it just and one layer. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay. And it really is okay if it's thicker. It just might have the photo bubble a little bit. So oh. then we're going to place this down onto there. And to make it like a Polaroid, I just realized I may have put it upside down. You just put your photo upside oh. down. Man, and I'm doing it the opposite way. How are you, how are you doing I'm thinking this? of a different project. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just start over. We're going to put it that I'll, way. I'll start doing Yay. one of these little ones. It still works, though. <laughs> So to make it like a Polaroid, you want to have um, more space on the bottom <laughs> and even spaces around the other three sides. And so just leaving that space a little bit emptier at the base uh, will make it like a Polaroid. <laughs> and then you would smooth it out. You could use your foam brush or your finger, like I'm going to do. And you're doing my favorite way of this, and that is making the small ones with a two-inch tile. Mm -hmm. um, and you do have to buy those on a sheet, at least locally you do. And so you're buying like 36 for $2.57 <laughs> for real. <laughs> so you can buy 36 for that many and make a whole bunch of these little guys. And so mm -hmm. you did a great job. Well, thank you. You did it much more correct than I just did. And then you'll actually put a nice thin layer and you can use this brush over that. And okay. so when you're making it into a coaster, like our examples up front here, or like you, or mine that I flipped over really weirdly, um, you do want to put about two to three layers all together on there to protect it. So that when you're putting your drinks on there and they sweat or that kind of thing, yeah, ours have lasted ranks. great. But look at your cute little magnet. Well, thank you. <laughs> you would just use to make the magnet version of this, uh, large magnets so that they're nice and... and Magnity um, onto the back of that with Corella glue. That is the official rule. <laughs> I drank a lot of coffee Word. right before we went on. <laughs> so that's my excuse. With the magnets, I only put one layer on there because it doesn't really need to be protected super well. So right. it'll dry in like five minutes or less. And you can put your Gorilla Glue onto your magnet, put it on the back of that, and you're good to go. I'm going to see if it really does dry in five minutes. Yeah. Timing. <laughs> Do it. Awesome. Start. Um, as a side note, to make your coasters fancier, um, we did use just a gold leafing pen, which you can actually get at Menards, which blew my mind. I don't what? know the price of that. <laughs> but it is this little metallic pen um, you can buy, and it's putting um, a gold leaf uh, type of material onto the sides. And I think that just makes it a little fancier, yeah. right? Like, well, it's I gold leafing, and that's and Ashley's thing. thing. <laughs> um, so you can do that. You could actually start to do it on this one. But otherwise, okay. really I'll work simple. On that. Really simple. So great. Okay. Mod Podge. Moving along, we have one that I kind of consider maybe slightly a Pinterest fail. Um, but <laughs> if you're patient with it and you do one for starters and you're okay with the first one not turning out great, you'll be fine. This is uh, transferring an image, again, either a laser or an inkjet printed image that you can do at home, um, onto a canvas. And so we've got a small example here using a two and three quarter uh, inch square canvas. 
or we started to do one with an eight by 10 here and we didn't complete it so you can kind of see. We're gonna work on a little guy though. And okay. so I'm gonna let you use a different medium and this is Liquitex gel medium. And it's a matte version of it. And it's a really thick medium. And you're gonna just do a heavy layer of that onto your small little square. Okay. <laughs> um, and this, the point of this project is that you, when you print your image, you're gonna place it down, this one correctly, <laughs> down, face down on this <laughs> gel medium. And the gel medium is going to soak in the ink. And then later on, later the next morning, you're actually going to remove just the paper. And so you can go ahead and I'll steal this. And Thank this you. doesn't matter if it's upside down um, or right side up, that kind of thing. And you'll press it onto there. And it might move around a little bit. So you kind of just tap it and that kind of thing. You really want all of the ink to come in contact with that gel medium that you just put down. Okay. Um, and we don't need to put any layer on top. We're actually just going to do what you're doing there. Um, and you're going to let it sit overnight, and that's how long it takes at least that long for the ink to transfer into the gel medium and stay on the canvas. Nice. Now, this project is not for perfectionists. It is for people who want <laughs> to have a distressed look <laughs> because it can be achieved, and it looks super great, kind of like the start of our 8x10 there. Um, but it would dry to be this, uh, like this. It looks kind of boring right now. And I'll steal this because we're done with our foam brush. And then the next morning after it's dried onto there, we're actually going to start to spray it. And you want your paper to fully absorb the water um, so that you can actually remove the paper then. And so you kind of see, yeah, you can maybe trash. start to see. <laughs> it's good times. <laughs> we are going to start. This is where it takes patience. And so you either okay. want to have had wine or not too much coffee like <laughs> I just did so that you're like, okay with this taking a minute. You want to be just rubbing your finger on there really slightly. <clears throat> and you're going to start to see chunks of paper start to happen. Oh. And that is you removing the paper from this. And so you would actually, this would probably take a total of five minutes. So we, uh, we won't do the whole thing. Um, but you'll kind of keep doing this until you start to see more and more paper removing. And you're going nice. to see your image exposing below it. Now, if you're really impatient, um, like with some of my first examples, uh, you'll actually remove the gel, in, which you don't want to do. You want that to stay there so your image stays there. But you're going to keep wiping it off. And I'll show you with our large example here that I'll move. Um, this here is where we've already removed the paper. And this is what it looks like, like that little one we were just working on. And so we would spray this down and keep rubbing it. And that paper will all come off, leaving that gel on there in your image. So it nice. will be a little distressed looking. You have to be down with that look, which yeah. I think can look super awesome if yeah. you have like three or four of these all together. Um, you can do the small canvases or the big ones. And then you've got this great little canvas transfer going on there. And you do need to do one coat of this Liquitex back on top of it when it's all done. Otherwise, it will keep drying to look really papery and gross. And then you're like, I Pinterest failed. But if you're like me, you actually didn't read all the instructions to realize that it actually is OK and it's going to turn out. So that's the end of that. The end. Then, nice work. I like how you colored it gold. I did. That's perfect. We're going to use our hot iron here. And this is to make our banner that we've got up here. And this is uh, printing onto drop cloth. Uh, you can also use other fabrics. <clears throat> this is one thing I thought was going to be a fail, but it wasn't. And so we've got our drop cloth here. You could use other fabric, and that would be okay. great. And then I have freezer paper, and you can see we have our glossy side. We're going to put this down on here, and you are just going to put that iron on top of there yeah. and start to go back and forth. It doesn't take too long, uh, just kind of going back and forth a few times. We're going to <clears throat> adhere the freezer paper onto our drop cloth. And this is the point of this is to prep it to go through your inkjet printer. And so you can print any photo, black and white, in color, onto fabric by just kind of creating this to be stiffer and be able to go through your printer. And then you can just dream up whatever you want to do with your photo on a piece of fabric. Wow. Um, so it's really nice and easy. This is not permanently adhering it onto there, but you'll see it's now like sticking on there pretty nicely. You would cut this down to be an 8.5 by 11 size to go through your printer. Mm -hmm. And then it prints. TV magic. Oh, boy. Nice. You, <laughs> this is the black and white version of this. So we still have our freezer paper on the back. We just sent it through. We did cut off all the little guys here so we don't jam our printer. And I used someone else's printer, so I was a little nervous. But it worked just fine. And then you will do this part next. We have our scissors next to you here. I would leave your freezer paper on so you can cut this to be whatever size you want it to be. So if you just want to like cut next to the bench there, just a straight line down oh. to show how easy it is, hopefully, oh. <laughs> to cut here. Um, you'll just cut it to be whatever shape you want. And by leaving the freezer paper on for the until you're closer uh, to the end of this, um, it'll help all those little snags and things not happen as much. Mm -hmm. 
And then you can cut it to be kind of the shape we've got here on our canvas banner that's hanging. Yeah. And you can glue it to hot or to felt or a nice. piece of twine and things to kind of hang. And then or you're frame set. it. Yes, or frame it. It's really cool. Any fun classes you guys have coming up? We've got all kinds of things. We're really focused on hand lettering right now, um, as well as different workshops with Nicole Ray. Um, string art and all that kind of thing. And next week we'll have a whole new slew of classes released. Ooh, a <laughs> slew of them. A slew. There's her Facebook page. Go check.